Hello, YouTube friends. This is going to be a short hands-on video on the current inverted yield curve that we're seeing in treasuries. We'll use Python, we'll use Matplotlib, and we're going to use two data sources uh, that are made available for free generously by Quandle and Yahoo Finance. So if you follow these videos in the past, I always use Yahoo Finance, but Quandle is also a great source and it's free as well, or some of it is free. Uh, welcome to Valamel. My name is Manuel Amunategui. I'm the author of Monetizing Machine Learning. So this is the book that's going to help you take your machine learning models and uh, mount, mount them to the web, uh, extend them to the web so that the entire world can uh, enjoy them. We're going to look at building UIs around these models and as well as looking at building paywalls if you want to monetize them. Um, and I have also have other books on Amazon. Just put my name there, Manuel Amunategui, and you'll see what, 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 what I have. And I appreciate your support. So please sign up for my newsletter and also connect and subscribe to the channel. Uh, this video is going to be uh, filed under finance. So the button right here, and you can see all the other videos I've done on, on this topic. So I did another video on uh, long-term, short-term rates, and I was using ETFs and I was not super satisfied with them because, uh, you know, they, they were ETFs and they were kind of on different scales. Uh, now I found the perfect uh, data source to, to, to do this. Anytime you have a question about the markets or a question about anything quantitative, uh, you know, roll up your sleeves, get the data, find this, find a data source and plot it yourself. Get your own answers. There's a lot of people who talk about this stuff on the web, on the news, you know, some of this good, some of this bad, get your own answers. Um, so Quandle, www.quandl, Q-U-A-N-D-L.com is a phenomenal site. They have great data sources. They have some normal stuff. They have some really weird esoteric stuff. Uh, a lot of it is uh, not free. Uh, they work a lot with hedge funds and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of financial companies. But they give a lot of stuff for free as well, including these uh, treasury, uh, treasury yield curve rates. And that's what we're going to use here today. Uh, off the bat... Uh, highlight the three year and the five year. If you keep pushing the button, you'll get a different color. So find one you like. Uh, here we see this darker color is the long term rate. And most of the time, the long term rate is higher, meaning it's more expensive uh, high than the, uh, you know, the short term rate. And that's what it is. That's what that's normal. So when you lend money, right, to somebody, uh, uh, the short term, the rates are going to be cheaper than in a long or than in a long term, right? Because if you're, you know, giving somebody money in a long term, that's money you're not going to get back. You won't be able to use. So you expect it to be more expensive than short term rates. So in most situations, the longer term rates are more expensive. Thus, it's higher, right? You see the line is higher. But there are some bizarre situations when there is a flip where the short term rates are more expensive or higher than the uh, long term rates. And that usually is a harbinger of bad things to come, a recession, a market crash, et cetera, et cetera. And what's what we're going to look at? We're going to we're going to plot it and we're going to see that the past two recessions indeed did have that flip. Uh, but here it's interesting. Right off the bat, we can see that, you know, right now it's awfully close. Uh, there is some separation usually at market bottoms. That's interesting, too, as an indicator. Um, market tops it looks like it's very you know close together so that's what we're going to do so hit the download button hit scsv and it's going to download to your local machine all sorts of rates for uh, i think 30 years so really good data go to uh finance.yahoo.com if you've seen my videos before you know i go there all the time get carrot gspc and download the s p 500 the s p 500 is a phenomenal index it's like the heartbeat of the world uh i think uh um, the S&P 500 represents 80% of all the equity trading in the U.S., and 30% of that is international. Uh, so it's really, really a heartbeat of the world, of the, the the economic health of the world. So phenomenal, phenomenal. So click the date range, uh, click max, done, click apply, and download. There's a lot of clicks, but you'll get there eventually. And make sure those two CSVs are pointing to the same place where you know you are pointing the. Uh, the Jupyter Notebook, where the link is in the description. Okay, so we're going to click, we're going to bring those uh, CSVs into memory, and we see uh, that, you know, here are the rates. It goes from one month to 30 years. These, are, you know, this is a lot of very interesting data. We're only going to look at the three and the five year, because that's what people use for this, this yield curve inversion. But I recommend that you look at the longer term rates. It's very telling what people, you know, how people feel about, you know, the long term. Um, we are going to uh, check the dates. We see we have a lot more um, S&P 500 from 1950s than we do of rates. So we're going to we have to chop off all this that we don't have a matching. So we're going to have to remove a lot of the older years on the S&P 500. That's what we do here. 
And we're also going to take a peek at the data. Uh, here we see, you know, the S&P 500. We can see that, you know, it's been going up, up, up. You know, two market crashes and keeps going up. Keep in mind that I did a video recently on in my finance. So go there about inflation. It doesn't, it's not as rosy as this, unfortunately. It's uh, it's not as good, but it's, and uh, that's, inf that's the magic of inflation, right? Or the, the horror of inflation, however you want to look at it. More interesting is to compare both rates together. Here we see uh, kind of what we saw on Quandl, same thing, right? The separation again, you know, I like to see the separation is happening at market bottoms, which is very interesting. And it's just very compact and together at market tops. So interesting. So now we're gonna join both of these data sets together. We're gonna to use the PD merge function and we're gonna uh, do a left join on uh, the S&P 500 because we have more data. And uh, we're gonna use a forward fill, meaning that if there's some missing data, we're simply gonna say, okay, do you have anything before? If you do, copy it and move it forward or copy it forward, and like that we fill the NAs. Uh, and it's a, nice, it's, it's a decent way of imputing things. And in the end, we have this data frame. We have a date, adjusted close of the S&P 500. I probably should have called this S&P 500. And the, the three year and the five year. So let's plot everything together. We're gonna to plot on one axis, we're gonna plot the three year and the five year. And on another axis, we're gonna plot the S&P 500 uh, with the, the twin X function, a matplotlib, you can you know split the Y axis. Um, and here we see, you know, kind of same thing we saw before and overlaid with the S&P 500. So this is, it's hard to see. I mean, there's definitely some, you know, some uh, similarities in these market tops and crashing, market tops and crashing. We also see the rates have been going down uh, since, you know, 1992. And, uh, but it's hard to see, right? It's hard to tell what's going on. So what we're going to do next, this is where, this is the fun part. We're going to subtract the five year minus the three year. And that's going to be very telling. And on the X, other axes, we're gonna put the S&P 500 as usual. And there it is. This is what I wanted to show you. Um, we see clearly that the, the 2000 market crash, that was a tech bubble. We see the yield curve inversion. The 2008 market crash, that was the real estate, were real estate related. We see also a yield curve inversion. And lo and behold, today, we're seeing the start of that inversion as well. So. This is not, uh, you know, I'm not saying, that, I'm not showing this to panic. On the contrary, because we have this information, we're now informed, we know what to do. And I'm certainly not using it as a, um, a trading indicator, more as being cautious about what you, what you know, what you want to do and to keep this in mind whenever you're doing, you know, like financial decisions. Uh, if, you, if you start panicking here, right, look at that. If, that would be the same thing as panicking right here, maybe in 2000, uh, in 19, let's say 1998, or panicking in 2007, right? The markets kept on going up for a few more years in both situations, right? So you can't, it's not a question about panicking. It's more a question about, you know, protecting yourself or thinking what to do. I know some people start looking at ways of using options to protect a portfolio. Then again, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, I can't give this kind of advice. I'm not a trader. I'm not an economist. Uh, but uh, I think it's just very interesting to roll up your own sleeves and get your own answers and understand what's going on in the market. So that's what I want to show you. The, the notebook is in the descriptions and, um, you know, uh, keep exploring, you know, uh, and whenever you hear stuff, uh, that's repeated a lot on the news and the web, I recommend, you know, find the data set and, you know, plot it out. Get your own answers to these questions. Catch you next time.